Hello everyone. Welcome to Tutorials Point. Now in this video, we will learn about different factors which affect the activity of enzyme. Now we know that enzymes are biological catalysts which are themselves not used in the reaction but increase the speed of a biochemical reaction. So these enzymes being proteinaceous in nature are affected by various factors. So let us see. The learning objectives will be to describe the effect of factors like temperature, pH, substrate concentration and inhibitors on the activity of an enzyme. Now before we move forward to learning the factors, let us have a quick recap of the enzyme catalyzed reaction. So when a graph is being plotted on with free energy and progress of reaction, we realize that as the enzymes lower down the activation energy, more and more substrate can reach the transition state and get converted into products. So enzyme combines with the substrate to form an enzyme substrate complex. Now this enzyme substrate complex is the transition state. After this there is no going back, it, the enzyme is retained and the product is obtained finally. And the function of enzyme, how does it work? The mechanism of action is according to Michaelis and Menten, it lowers down the activation and energy and thereby bring about more conversion of substrate into product. So what are the factors which affect the activity of enzyme? Now the enzymes are proteinaceous in nature. So let me just show you how tertiary structure is formed by folding of a protein. Let us see. So this is a primary structure. Now it undergoes different types of coilings, foldings, disulfide linkages and hydrogen bonds and leads to formation of a folded protein just like this. Now just imagine that this is the active site of this enzyme. So a substrate which has a similar structure to the active site will come and bind to it. Now as we change inside the body, inside the cell, we know that we have to maintain a constant temperature and pressure, right? The what is known as homeostasis. Now if that temperature is varied or that pH is varied or any other condition is varied, the structure of the protein will be affected. So we will see this folded protein, how does it change as the temperature changes, as the pH changes, as the concentration of substrate changes and also in the presence of inhibitors. Now the effect of temperature on the activity of an enzyme. Now enzymes or for that matter proteins are thermolabile which means that they are very sensitive to temperature variations. Each and every enzyme has a specific temperature at which it works most efficiently. Now that temperature is known as the optimum temperature. For example, for amylase it is around 37 degrees Celsius. So the range of optimum temperature for enzymes will be 25 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now there is a trend which enzyme activity follows. So as the temperature keeps on increasing, according to kinetic theory or collision theory, more and more enzymes and substrates will collide with each other. So when the temperature increases, slowly and slowly the activity of enzyme increases because more enzyme can collide with more substrate and more product can be formed. But only up to a level because beyond increase in temperature beyond the optimum temperature, that is if it is around 25 to 40 degrees degree Celsius, if it goes beyond 40 degrees Celsius, then the activity decreases. Let me show you again. So we made this tertiary structure of protein. So this is an enzyme and this is the active site, right? It has a specific shape. Now as the temperature increases, these bonds, they start breaking and the structure starts unfolding. And now the bonds have been broken because of high temperature and now it no longer has any active site for on which the substrate can bind. So this is what happens and this phenomena is known as denaturation of enzyme. So loss of the tertiary structure of the protein because of the increase in temperature or for that matter any other factor which affects the activity of enzyme leads to loss of the activity of enzyme because of the change in the shape of the active site of the enzyme, right? And this process is known as denaturation of enzymes. Now see the trend. So up to the 5 degree, 5 degree to optimum temperature. Every 10 degree increase in the temperature leads to increase in the activity of the enzyme. 
but decreases beyond the optimum temperature now as it reaches the optimum temperature for example for humans it is 37 degrees celsius more than optimum temperature the activity of the enzyme the rate of the reaction decreases why because the enzyme gets denatured and this this range is known as temperature coefficient or q10 now for most of the biological reactions the q10 will be equal to 2 now let us see how does pH affect the activity of enzyme. Now pH all of us know is potential of hydrogen means it is the concentration of hydrogen ions inside a solution. Now just imagine protein is made up of hydrogen bonds, disulfide bonds, tertiary linkage. Now as the pH increases for example the hydrogen ion concentration increases again the active site will be affected because there will be more hydrogen being attached to the active site. This will change further the shape of the active site. So now again the substrate cannot bind to the active site. So similar method is happening just that ionization and solubility of the enzyme is affected because of the pH. So each enzyme has again has a range of optimum pH which can be from 6 to 7.5. So from 6 to 7.5 is the range beyond that or below that the activity can be affected but there are few enzymes which act at lower pH like acidic pH for example stomach. In stomach the pH is acidic but pepsin acts at that pH only. And in intestine, trypsin acts at a pH of 8.8, .8, which is a highly basic pH. So few exceptions are there, but the range is 6 to 7.5. Now, most of them maximally operate at neutral pH since 6 to 7.5 is a neutral pH. And how does it happen? By affecting ionization and solubility of the enzyme. It also affects formation of hydrogen bonds and disulfide bonds. So this, this is a kind of graph we get. We get a perfect bell graph, bell shaped graph. So in enzyme activity and pH goes on increasing up to the optimum. It, we have taken the limit here which will be the optimum. Beyond that the activity will decrease. Now next is substrate concentration. Imagine when substrate is more, more and more enzyme will interact with substrate. But there will come a point when enzyme and substrate are saturated with each other. Now there is no more any interaction between them. So beyond that again what will happen? There will be no change. I am not saying they will decrease but there will be no change. There will be a constancy there. Right? So constant enzyme concentration, we have, to, we have to presume that enzyme concentration is constant and when the substrate concentration keeps on increasing, the rate of reaction will increase but only up to a certain point. See in the graph, the rate of reaction and substrate concentration till the time all the active sites are not occupied, the rate goes on increasing but here there is a saturation of active site. Now all the active sites have enzymes attached to it, have a substrate attached to it. Now no more change can happen. So this is known as maximum velocity of the reaction. So if we talk in the reference of rate of reaction, so whenever all the active sites are occupied by substrate, that is known as maximum velocity. And half of it will be known as Vmax by 2. So any further increase will not cause any change and velocity is maximum which is known as maximum velocity. Now the presence of inhibitors. Inhibitors are basically those compounds which decrease. Either they decrease or they completely stop the reaction. Now you must be thinking what are the uses of these inhibitors. We will be discussing in the coming videos in detail about inhibition but the use is the different types of drugs which are made to cure various infections. So they affect directly the enzymatic action. So they inhibit the enzyme activity. Next is the activators. Now activators are also increasing the enzyme activity. Just the way inhibitors are decreasing, the activators are increasing. The activators can be cofactors and coenzyme. You can see clearly in the diagram, this is the enzyme, this is the active site. Inhibitor molecule binds to some other site or it can also bind to the active site. Similarly, activator, now it is what it is doing, it is binding and making the active site more suitable for attachment of the substrate. 
So this is all about what are the factors which affect enzyme activity. To summarize we can say that enzyme being a tertiary structure of the protein is affected by various factors, major of them are temperature, pH, substrate concentration and presence of inhibitors. Now the temperature because enzymes are thermolabile, very temperature sensitive, beyond the increase in the optimum temperature the activity of the enzyme will decrease because the three dimensional structure of the active site will be affected. The optimum temperature range is 25 to 40 degrees Celsius. Similarly, pH causes also increases beyond the optimum will cause decrease in the activity of the enzyme. The optimum pH range is 6 to 7.5 because beyond that there will be ionization of the active site. Now in both the cases there is a loss of activity of enzyme and this process is known as denaturation of enzyme. Next is substrate concentration. Now in case of substrate concentration increase is up to a certain limit till the time Every enzyme is occupied by a substrate and the velocity at that point is the maximum velocity of the reaction. And the inhibitors, inhibitors are those substances which decrease the speed of reaction and activators are those substances which increase the speed of reaction. So this was all about the factors which affect the activity of the enzyme. Now we have to very carefully see how the activity of the enzyme is inhibited because it is also very important to know why enzyme inhibition also has a commercial value. All of this we will explore in the upcoming video. Till then, thank you very much. Tutorialspoint.com Simply easy learning.